Hello. Um, today I'm going to talk about one of the greatest scientific revolutions. Actually, I will also explain how this has even triggered one of the biggest inflection points in the history of mankind. DNA is the language of life. DNA is, is composed by a very simple alphabet of only four letters, A, C, G, and T. And actually, uh, combinations of these letters create all the diversity of life. For example, DNA encodes the differences between a bacteria or, for example, a tiger. And also, the DNA uh, encodes, for example, all, uh, all the human developmental plan. For example, how a hand is made or even how the human brain is made. Over the last couple of decades, we have uh, undergone a huge revolution in biosciences. Actually, we have understood and we have learned how to communicate with life in its own genuine language. We have learned how to read and write DNA. This is what I call the read and write revolution. We have learned how to read DNA, how to sequence DNA from a very painful process of only sequencing small pieces at a time to sequencing massively in parallel whole eukaryotic genomes. The human genome, it has 3,000 million characters. So actually, it's as long as 3,000 times Don the, the novel Don Quixote by Cervantes. Today, we can sequence a human genome within a few hours and less than $1,000. In parallel, we have also learned how to write DNA. Sequencing costs have dropped dramatically over the last years. And actually, we have learned how to write entire eukaryotic chromosomes and prokaryotic chromosomes. For example, in 2016, we reported the synthesis of a radically recoded uh, E. coli genome, bacterial genome, with more than 64,000 changes compared to the wild type uh, microbe. Also, we have learned how to edit DNA. This has been an incredible tool. For example, this tool that you see here, CRISPR, actually this is a molecular tool that can precisely address a specific base of this huge message that I was mentioning that this 3,000 million bases. So we can go with this tool and specifically modify a specific point of the human genome. We'll see what are the impacts of this. Actually, the read and write technologies allows us to travel in time. We have some kind of uh, time machine. DNA lasts thousands of millions of years, uh, hundreds of thousands of years. So we can go and read these messages from the past. For example, we have managed to sequence genomes, for example, of the Neanderthal or, for example, the holy mammoth, that they have been extinguished from the Earth for thousands of years. Not only that, actually, the editing technologies allows us not only to see the past, but also to bring back the, bring back the past. For example, we have rewritten some of these genes that do not exist anymore. And for example, we have been able to recreate, for example, the hemoglobin that was flowing through the veins of these holy mammoths. So actually, not only we can see the past, but also we can restore this lost diversity. However, probably the, the biggest impact of these read and write technologies, it has been for human health. So one of the main implications is that we can use bright technologies to repair faulty genomes. Here I'm showing two examples. For example, on the right, uh, we see, for example, a boy that has, um, a it has a butterfly boy that actually has a, a genetic defect on his genome that makes his skin completely fragile. Here we can use genetic engineering to restore the functionality of this genome. Here I'm showing on your right another example. For example, the bubble boys, actually these boys, due to a genomic defect, they are born without immune system. This, of course, creates an immense problem because they must be kept in complete isolation. Here again, the, re the bright technologies can help in restoring the functionality of these genomes. We can even go beyond. Actually, not only we can rest repair genomes, but actually we can even enhance genomes to fight disease. This is the example of CAR T therapies. Actually, in this case, we can take the immune cells of a cancer patient, we can genetically program them into a lab to attack the cancer and inject them back. Actually, this has produced amazing results. Uh, we have already two drugs approved by the FDA and also the new generations of these cars, they are more and more sophisticated, that they allow us to be more precise and effective. 
um, these technologies, right technologies, allow us to modify our, our own genomes, but also we can modify the genomes that the bacteria that live with us. Actually, we are an ecosystem. We have bacteria that live in our gut, we have bacteria that live in our skin, or bacteria that live, for example, in our mouth. These bacteria, each of them has its own genome. And actually, we can exploit this genome for therapy. For example, um, there are some diseases, like for example, phenyl caseinuria, or for example, urea cycle disorders, that the human genome has defects that cause some metabolic deficiencies. We could engineer the genome of this bacteria to basically complement these uh, uh, metabolic deficiencies. And in this case, at the end, we are doing gene therapy without modifying a single base of the human genome. Editing technologies can even help us in breaking the barriers between a species. For example, as you probably are aware, one of the biggest unmet medical needs is the lack of organs for transplantation. Why couldn't we use, for example, the kidney of a pig, for example, to transplant into a human? There are two main reasons. One of them is that the pig genome contains endogenous retroviruses that could infect humans. And the second reason is that there is an incompatibility between pigs and humans. Actually, progress has been astonishing. In 2017, we, we reported, for example, the first pig that had no endogenous retroviruses. We used CRISPR to modify the genome of this pig and inactivate all the viruses from the genome. And on the same year, pigs were born without any endogenous retrovirus active. The second part, immune compatibility of these animals. In this case, also the progress has been very impressive. We have been able to modify these genomes and make them more similar to humans. And for example, uh, it has been reported that kidneys produced in, pig, in these pigs, or for example, uh, uh, hearts and pancreatic isolates could last months and even years in models of non-human primate. So here again, the read and write technologies could help us in solving one of the biggest medical pro problems, which is the lack of organs for, for transplantation. For the first time in history, we have been capable to modify ourselves, to modify human nature. CRISPR technologies can be used to modify the human genome. Uh, I'm sure you have heard in the news, for example, uh, this uh, Chinese scientist, uh, He Zhuangfei, modified the embryos of two babies to make them resistant to HIV. Of course, this has created a lot of debate. So where are we going? Here, I'm showing a table. This is a table that uh, uh, George Church, a professor of genetics at Harvard University, created. This table contains traits that could give a big impact in the human genome. For example, here you can see traits that could make a human resistant to HIV, that could help in growing bigger muscle, or for example, to have an extended lifespan. Of course, any modifica so modifications of the human genome for therapeutic purposes, there is a consensus in the scientific community that this is okay to do, especially somatic modifications. However, any debate beyond this point is still relatively immature. Where do we want to go as a society? We need to accelerate the debate between the scientists and also, of course, all the stakeholders to see where we want to go. Actually, some of these modifications have already been tried. For example, uh, Josiah Zeiner, he injected himself a CRISPR cocktail uh, that in principle should break his myostatin and so grow bigger muscle. Also, we just mentioned the case of Nan and Lulu Basically, these two babies were germline modified by this Chinese professor to introduce alleles that should give them, in principle, uh, HIV resistance. And also, another uh, functionality is that uh, in mice, this allele has also been associated with enhanced cognition. Or actually, even back in 2015, here we see uh, Elizabeth Parrish. Back then, she injected herself with extra copies of telomerase. She's the founder of BioViva. This is, this is a company that commercializes anti-aging uh, therapies. For example, having ex this, the, this same treatment in mice uh, extends the lifespan about 20%. <coughs> Where do we want to go as a society? For sure, many of these treatments didn't provide the expected outputs. However, progress is fast. And what is clear is that the genie is already out of the bottle. 
So for the first time uh, in history, we are not only able to modify the biosphere, but also we are also capable to modify ourselves. This is a huge inflection point in mankind's history. Of course, biotech and synthetic biology and, and read and bright technologies will be key in the fourth industrial revolution together with artificial intelligence. We have seen the impact that they, they could have in our health. We can repair genomes and cure diseases that they have been uncurable for, for, for millennia. Also, we can even, as we saw, enhance humans to fight, for example, cancer. We saw the case of the CAR T therapies. However, we could even go beyond this therapeutic field. Engineering with life can help us even to maybe create more sustainable with the planet uh, industrial processes. Instead of chemically producing in industrial products, maybe we can just ferment them or brew them. Also, in the we can maybe even be more humane in the production of animal products. Maybe instead of killing an animal to harvest leather or meat, maybe we can just grow meat on a dish or we can grow leather on a dish. Of course, all these technologies empower us with incredible possibilities. However, where we go uh, with all these technologies is not a, a question that only the scientists need to, need to address. However, it needs to be addressed with the society as a whole. Thank you very much.